Guys, today we're taking a look at one of the most highly anticipated early Jordans and what might be one of the most interesting sneakers we've taken a look at in a while. And that's saying something. So let's kick it off with a good old pull tab. Ain't nothing better. Ooh, okay. This is a pair of shoes that I haven't seen before. And they're from a, a little brand which uh, not that many people know about. I'd say kind of a low-key brand. Ooh, yes. Look at this. These. So I saw these things bumping around. It's called the Reebok Trinity. And I was like, yo, Reebok, when did you start making heat like this? It reminds me a lot of the uh, the Premier Road Modern, but this just has a significantly more retro design. If you look at the side over here, you've got these uh, mesh panels, which you can actually see through. So that's going to be a super dope spot for uh, ventilation. I know right now ventilation is not something you want. It is freezing outside. But come summertime, these things look like they are absolutely absolutely a solid pair of sneakers. It's definitely very well made. The midsole doesn't feel that squishy, so I'm gonna have to try them out and see how comfortable they are. I mean, some of this foam does feel squishier than other parts, but the colorway is super nice. Definitely something that I'm pretty happy to see from Reebok. It's nice to have them in the mix. We've got a lot from Adidas, Nike, New Balance. This ankle cushioning is really nicely padded. Maybe I'll just slip my foot in and just give you an initial impression on how they feel. Perfect fit as well. So yeah, true to size and they are pretty damn comfortable. But again, I just slipped them on. I'm gonna have to wear these things around to test them out a little bit. Let me know what you guys think of the brand new Reebok Trinity. All right, we've got a nice little package from Nike, which is pretty surprising because I don't know if you guys have checked your Nike sneakers out recently, but it's like dead. There's nothing on there. But this was one I definitely wanted to check out. It's a little bit different, but the same at the same time. Also hate it when they don't add a pull tab. Means we gotta get the knife out. Okay, so we got a regular Nike box. Ooh, they're a lot darker than I expected. This is the Cyber Dunk. First off, on the product images, these things look almost like a dark gray but in hand, they are very, very dark, pretty much black. Literally one of the main features of these things, if you hit it with the flash, let me just test it out. And if you hit it with the flash, that is sick. So yeah, they're very reflective. Basically the reflective panels are uh, all of the overlay panels. So it kind of looks like, I guess, traditional dunk low color blocking. So that's where they get this cyber nickname. As expected, this material is very synthetic. So it feels, yeah, it does not feel great in terms of quality. I definitely wanted to check these things out though. I think they look pretty dope. Let me know if you guys pick these things up. All right, we've got a pair of Jordans, which I think is early technically. Ooh, okay. We got the same box as the 85 lows. Yeah, it, it's like a little bit more of a more narrow Jordan box. Uh, it also has raised Nike branding, which is all shiny, and then a matte white box. So this is the new packaging going forward. Ooh, okay. This is the Jordan 1 Metallic Navies R9. Nice. Obviously, basically, the metallic blue Jordan 1 low from 2016 that uh, I will add are reselling for a ton of money. This time, it's not in that Jordan 1, like the, the regular Jordan 1 form. This is an actual 85 cut. I would definitely take these over the neutral grays just because it has something a little bit going on. It's not much, but it's pretty damn clean. Again, another pretty much all over white pair of Jordan 1 lows, but obviously you've got that metallic Nike swoosh, and then you've got that little metallic back tab with the Wings logo. Nice, thick ankle padding. If you haven't tried the Jordan 1 low 85 cut, they did really well with making a decent amount of padding around the ankle area, which is a noticeable difference between this and a regular pair of Jordan 1 low. Of course you have the 85 cut midsole as well and you've also got the text on uh, the sock liner because yeah OG cut. So uh, they dropped here in the EU the UK however they haven't released yet for you guys out in the US or potentially some other regions as well. I think they're only going to be dropping for you guys in March. Not entirely sure of an exact release date but these have been highly anticipated. If you picked up the neutral grays or some of the other super clean Jordan 1 low colorway maybe you're not into it but this is an OG colorway that is finally back here in 2024. I will also add you do not get any extra laces with these things. So just the white pairs. All right, we've got a little clothing pickup, which I think is going to be extremely interesting. It's from a brand called Saint Giovanni della Mo. So I've never got anything from this brand, but uh, they hit me up on Instagram and they were like, yo, we want to send you and your brother a piece 
and Dylan has already opened his and he told me how crazy this is. So first off, this is super heavy. Yo, what? It's hard to kind of describe what's going on here. So this, I think, is the front, although look at this. You've also got this on the back. Basically what this is, like a crew neck sweater, but there's a t-shirt on the back, kind of like stitched into it, which is crazy. I think apparently you can, uh, you can unstitch this t-shirt and then you basically have a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. On the front here, you've got this insane print and then it's like an extra sleeve over here. So you're getting like so many layers of fabric and so many layers to this design. It's actually crazy. Wearing it with the t-shirt on the back is definitely a bold choice. This is an extra large. My shoulder is literally getting burnt out holding it up because it is that heavy. This is definitely one of the most unique pieces that I have ever received. So thank you so much, Saint Giovanni della Mode. All right. All right, back to the sneakers, and this is that interesting pair I was telling you about. This is from a brand, a sneaker brand called Flowers for Society. It's a, a brand that I only recently found out about, but their designs have looked so cool. I was like, you know what, I gotta try it out. They're talking about how comfortable they are and everything like that. Okay, so this is the Radical OG, I believe is the model name. So this is not just an interesting sneaker, but also an interesting brand that I've kind of been eyeing up for a while now. So I believe it's relatively new, uh, but the founder of this brand, uh, Flowers for Society, used to be the head of energy at Adidas or had some kind of senior role at Adidas designing products. Thought that it was very interesting. He's now kind of moved on, started his own brand and created some extremely unique unique shoes, but they're also very affordable. Like I think these were about 120 pounds here in the UK, uh, which is definitely on the more affordable end. So if these things are really that comfortable, I think these could be a very, very solid option. I mean, they feel all right. Like the leather is quite nice. I'm really liking this cage effect that you have over here. These things are super flat underneath, which I think is quite unique. They do a couple different models. Um, I wanted to try out another one as well, but I thought this one is probably like the one that they talk the most about the comfort. So I'm just gonna slip my foot in and just see if the sizing is right. These look pretty sick. Yo, not gonna lie. I mean, definitely gonna have to try them out for a while to figure out how comfortable they are. A little bit tight in the toe box. I'd probably recommend going up a half size, but uh, this midsole is deceivingly comfortable. It's it's not the squishiest, it definitely is squishy, but it also has like these literal holes through the middle of it. So that squishes and compresses down into being a lot more squishy than it actually feels in hand. I think they look super, super cool. Very futuristic design. You do get an extra pair of legs as well, which is nice. Uh, that's just a very light blue color, which I think would go pretty well. I'm gonna be wearing these things around for a while, properly test them out, and uh, I'll let you guys know. Final package, man, and this happens every single time. We've been looking at these things, these early leaks and rumors. Are they as good as we hope they are? Only one way to find out. Ooh, we got a weird looking box. Look at that. We got the, the elephant print on the side. We got the Nike and the Jumpman branding. How often do we see that? Okay. <laughs> This is the Jordan 3 Craft Ivory. Leather, nice. Elephant print, a little bit weird. It's not the same kind of material that you typically find with regular Jordan 3s. It's like a little bit more, I guess, non-rough feeling. It's like a little bit more flattened out, but the upper leather feels really nice. You've got multiple extra panels, which changes the look quite a lot, like a lot more than I thought. I don't know, just look at that. It almost looks like it's taller or something. Like, look at this. Regular Jordan 3 and then the cropped version. It just looks like it's somewhat taller. In fact, these two shoes are a little bit, they're a little bit similar, you know? And then one of the most interesting elements is this back tab. So not only does it have that vintage aged aesthetic, but it also has the Nike and Jumpman branding, which is something we do not see very often at all. Double Jumpman on the tongue as well. One is painted in a kind of taupe color, and then you've got uh, the light blue stitched in one. Very, very nice colorway. Semi-translucent outsole also with that aged element. Like a lot of people have been saying like, yo, this is like, if Off-White made a Jordan 3. And look, 
I don't know. I don't know about all of that. I feel like it's just a nice colorway. I don't think that it just sounds to me like people are trying to hype these things up a little bit. I think if you like Jordan 3s, these things are subtle enough of a change. I think I like these a lot more than what they did to the 4s with the craft version. Don't get me wrong, I liked the 4s, but those details seemed a little bit random, like they added a weird patch of random material. These things seem like a little bit more, yeah, it makes sense. You know, they're changing up the branding a little bit. Why not? This is probably one of my favorite Jordan 3 colorways that's gonna be dropping this year. The weird thing about these is the release date. There's a couple different conflicting uh, dates for these. So the first one is February the 2nd that a lot of different uh, news outlets have been talking about. And then the second one is around March the 2nd or 3rd, something like that. I'll put it up on the, on the screen so you guys know the exact date. Now it's entirely possible that those two different dates are for two different regions like US and EU, but we're not going to know exactly until Jordan Brand confirms it. Just note that these things are going to be dropping very, very soon. But with that being said, guys, let me know what you think of these things down in the comment section. Man, they feel just, they feel premium. That's all the boxes I got. Let me know what your latest pickups are. I want to know down in the comment section.